<laughs> Hello, good morning, Lena. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm pretty well. How are you? Oh, pretty good. I'm like, I don't know, like awake and and in a good mood this morning. I don't know what that's about. It's very yeah, unusual. Feeling good and perky, wonderful. Yeah. So well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a nap after this. There is a gnat flying around, so if I like jerk my face out of the way, oh, literally, yeah. It's, I'm very easily startled. Me and even too. like a gnat flying at my face will yeah. I almost <laughs> sent my coworker to the emergency room this week. I was <laughs> I was in my office at my at my computer typing, and mm -hmm. whoever designed these offices was an idiot. I'm just gonna say that. They were an absolute idiot because when you're at your computer, your back is to the door, which is just ridiculous. It's like, it, 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 it's awful. It's very awful. But also in my office, my new office, mm -hmm. which is very pretty, um, mm -hmm. there's some computer equipment that's a little loud. So like, yeah. I don't hear people approaching. <laughs> um, so she started talking to me. And for mm -hmm. some reason, that scared the bejesus out of oh, me. No. And I screamed. And like yeah. I spun around in my chair and I'm looking at her and I'm like still screaming and she is like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <clears throat> almost sent her to be oh to be hearing. Where was I going with that? Uh they were easily startled and you had an act. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you. See, You're welcome. I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> very easily distracted today. I don't know what my problem is. Well, apparently I'm very easy to cough today, so I feel disturbed by not that COVID. no well that's not that i know of i've it just it just started happening just now um <clears throat> i was working with some dusty books yesterday yeah um which we won't need to get into but i do blame you for the fact that i was working with these dusty books way back when it's the pandemic's fault it, it brought is. about the opportunity for us to work in the historical room yeah, so I was working with some books that will become part of our historical room collection, which is great. Um, but I did not believe I had no faith and I did not think we were ever going to get to this project. So I didn't like work super hard to like have them organized. They ran out of room at the main library. So they sent them over to me. I put them up on this very high shelf. They're like two rows deep. They're very large and heavy and they have collected dust since they were sent over here. And so I was working on those. So I, I several years ago. Yeah, and I just truly never thought, I never thought that this would ever actually come to pass. But um, I'm kind of wondering if those, that dusty bookness perhaps has, has triggered just some continuing allergy. Because yes. I am very allergic to dust. And when I pulled those down, I was like, oh no, <laughs> I left them. They weren't even that bad. It was just the shelf, you know, it's the high up shelf. Anyway. Yeah. So. Good morning, Carrie and Andrea. I also have been dealing with a lot of dust lately. Um, yeah. I'm moving offices. It has taken me quite a while to move my duck collection. I'm not finished yeah. yet. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, they have collected some dust over the years. So I'm washing them as I as I move them. And it's That's a good idea. Yeah. And dirty work, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have your new office and that it is blue and lovely. It is, it's, it's, I'm. Even though your back is to the door. Yes, I hate that. I don't know who designed those offices, but yeah. they were an absolute idiot. Yeah, I'm trying to picture that, like, I mean, yeah, I can always see out my office door and the department door. Mm -hmm. like, then I just have to, you know, I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> um, I have really, really big news that I don't know if you've heard yet or not. Okay. Um, I read it in an email this morning. Um, I have to check my email. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, that means it can be a surprise. Maybe you already know it, though. Do you know who James Patterson is partnering with next? Yes. Yes. Don Martin. <laughs> and this could be an accompanying musical CD. I know. That's pretty awesome. She Which I like kind of... I hope that James Patterson doesn't partner with her on the CD portion. Like, hopefully that's all. <laughs> um, but it yeah, is really, I think that's probably out of his wheelhouse, you know? I, 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 although, 
yeah he, he does everything so who knows <laughs> it, i know and it, but he does do everything so maybe it's an opportunity for him to move into this realm but i think it's going to be called run rose run and it comes out in the spring i think springish yeah. of next year um but yeah so dolly part and james patterson and i saw that in my email this morning and i was very <laughs> excited to report on that and um <clears throat> we, i did that like a week ago a week and well, I, yeah i know i i didn't i didn't um I was behind the times, but I was like, eager to share it. You and I hadn't talked about it though yet. Right, we had not. Um, we usually yeah. do catch up on James Patterson news. When I found out, I immediately shared the news. I, I forwarded the email I got to Carrie because she's okay. a big Jolly fan. Oh, okay, so. nice. <laughs> yes. Well, and I forwarded the email to um, my coworker because you know we are deep in James Patterson all the time, and um, <laughs> and I. And she said that she she said she wondered if Dolly would get billing above James Patterson because usually it's James Patterson. But she said she wondered what that billing would be like because the only person I think who's been above James Patterson is Bill Clinton, but right. he is a former president of the United States. So I feel like that deference is probably warranted. But I don't but know. Dolly is like everyone loves Dolly, I so know. so maybe she. Well, I feel she like she should get top billing. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be exciting to find out too. Yes. Um, so I'm that was my, my big, well, I had like mini news, but that was like my big news. What's your mini yeah. news? Well, my mini news <clears throat> was that, um, this is not very exciting, but I just, I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw this post that had Fabio's face in it. And for like two seconds, I thought it was an ad that somehow like, you know, Instagram had learned that about me, had learned about like, because I mean, I have, we've done, we've yeah. talked about romance covers several times in the show. Yes. And I'm like, oh no, or now am I getting ads for Fabio? But it was a true E! News article. And um, I guess Fabio accused Gianni Versace of shorting him a million dollars during his like um, fragrant Versace fragrance campaign in the 90s. Um, and he, and Fabio had like that contract was like the biggest contract a model had ever gotten like up mm -hmm. until that point, male or female model. And anyway, so there's just this article with Fabio who he said, you know, and he was not an honest man. He shorted me a million dollars. I had the biggest contract, whatever. I don't know. And it just, now now Fabio, like before this show that we did, Fabio was not on my radar. Let me tell right? you. Yes. Yeah. Not on my radar at all. But now like I stopped <laughs> scrolling. I recognize him. <laughs> I stopped scrolling. I'm like, oh, what's this with Fabio? Yeah. So, anyway. Thanks, guys. That. <laughs> it's funny how like once you start like we once we started doing this show, different things became really important. Yeah. I know. Like, I gotta read that news article about I know you have to get things I wouldn't have clicked on otherwise. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So anyway, those are my two pieces of news. Did you have any um I don't really I didn't really yeah, news. I forgot we were gonna share that. I oh no, we, no, I we weren't. Good. To <laughs> full disclosure, for those of watching, we and I began discussing this show at four thirty-five yesterday when we both left work at five. When I called her and was like, "Oh, did you? Tomorrow's Friday." <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We were a little a long week. It was, it, was a, it was a really long week, and I don't even know <laughs> how. So yeah. So but. that's why my particular topic of conversation today was going to be all the one of those shows where it's all the books I have to return because I have <laughs> dear viewers hit my cap on how many books I'm allowed to have checked out from the library, and I will be blocked from checking anything else out until I return some of my fifty items. I'm sure that some viewers are like, "Oh yeah, that happens to me," and other viewers are like, "That's a." That's a thing. How do you allow that to happen? And it's probably right. either or and no in between. <laughs> I, um, I I don't think I've ever gotten to the cap. I get to the well, cap pretty regularly. That's that's a lie. I, I did get to the cap, but it was on purpose because I was trying to experiment with something. Okay, but yeah. yeah. Other than that, yeah. I remember. So I, I was trying to check out books yesterday and it was like, you know, patron has exceed or you know has hit their hold limit or, or their checkout limit i was like oh okay well patron will have to bring her books back <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh i was i was at some 
library thing and someone was demonstrating something and they just put up their own account yeah and it was um <laughs> they were over the limit they were like four books over the limit and they're like yeah. you know attention to me breaking the rules <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. i know and we've said that on here before but librarians are not model library patrons that's for sure Cheryl says she maxes out her online oh, yeah. checkouts all the time, but she reads quickly so she can check out a series at yes. a time. That's, that's that makes convenient sense. when you can check out the whole series and you don't have to worry about it. You've got them all. You don't have to wait for the next yeah. one to come back in. I like when I can do that. Yeah, that does make sense to check them all out at once. And then, yeah, if you read quickly, it's not so much of an issue. Yeah. If you don't read them at all and you just check them out and let them sit around your house for a long time, which is unfortunately sometimes what I do, then it's a waste of everyone's time. But I intend, I have really good intentions and I'm really excited about them. I know, I do the same thing. I get really excited about this book and I'm like, this is awesome. And then I bring it home and I'm like, okay, hmm. do it. Right. <laughs> so once it's in my possession, wow. I like, somehow am less yes. driven to read it. I don't I know. know. I know, it looks less exciting. And that, um, like some of these I think are from, like I may have been like reading like a list or something and was like, oh, this book sounds good. This, because I don't like, they don't, none of them seem familiar to me in a way of like, we got that book and I read about it and I wanted to read it. It was more like, I don't know, someone must have directed me to this. But the other thing that's been going on is that um, I started watching Better Call Saul. And so I've been reading less because I've been watching TV. Oh more. yeah. <laughs> um, I loved Breaking Bad, and so I just kept putting off watching Better Call Saul because I knew I was going to like it, and I just, I don't know, it's like waiting for a good time to watch it, and it just yeah. happened. It just, out of nowhere, I started watching, and so um, I'm not done with it. I mean, the show's not over yet anyway, but I'm not done with what's available yet, but um, so I've been spending a little more TV time than normal. <laughs> Yeah, that, that really does cut into your reading. <laughs> no, it absolutely does, especially because that's the type of show where it ends, the episode ends, and you just, you have to start the next episode. So mm -hmm. I cannot do it in chunks. My brother and his wife, they will watch, and this just blows my mind, and I know so many people, generations before me, watch TV this way, but they will just like watch one episode on a night of a show that they could, they could binge. They're all available, and they'll be like, <laughs> We just watched one episode of The Wire, and like, who, who are you? <laughs> that is a really odd way to do it. You <laughs> think you are? <laughs> but like you said, I know that's how TV was made, and I totally get that. But I just, I, it's all right there, and I just, I want to know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about uh, uh, the pandemic changing some of the things yeah. that we do in this show, changing the way we, yeah. we read. Uh, Cheryl said that um, she had to teach herself how to read online due to COVID. Yes. Because she hate eBooks, but now you find them very convenient, right? That's yeah. awesome, Cheryl. That's really cool that you like, you know, took, I mean, like, uh, like took that chance because it was something that you didn't like before. And I kind of did that too, because I just, that didn't seem to be, I just wanted the print book, but they're so convenient. Now I've got my e-reader and, you know, I'm glad that that pushed some of us into trying something new. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, it really did, I think, push a lot of people towards the e-format that they hadn't tried it before. Yeah. And um, what's interesting watching the, I, I am in charge of like the, the e-book stuff for the library and, you know, every month I look at the statistics and it's like, yes, a lot of people went to ebooks during the pandemic. They started mm -hmm. using them and they're, they continue to use them. Like yeah. those haven't dropped, they keep climbing. So mm -hmm. our ebook usage keeps picking up, Yeah, um, which is really interesting to see. It's hard to go back once you can just click on this title and then have it delivered to you right now. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. And, you know, it's, I, I love that I can have like five books in my bag, but it takes up like that much space because they're on my yeah. e-reader, you know? Yeah. Like, that was one thing that I always hated was, because I read a lot of like sagas, like mm -hmm. <laughs> they're very long and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm so close to the end of this one. Yeah. You have to take this one and the next one. And 
but yes, being able yeah, to you're carrying, you know, 1200 pages or 2000 pages or whatever around with you. But so I don't even know like what the limit is on the e-reader, like how, technically like thousands, how many files. And, yeah. 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 I, but, because most of my stuff is like from the library. It's like, it goes back, it goes back. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, yeah. I've never even come close to, to hitting no. yeah. right there. Well, because I'm me, I have definitely not, did I, I mean, I purchased the e-reader, so now I also purchase e-books. And I will tell you, tell I'll tell everyone in the world who's watching this, I've yet to read a single e-book that I've purchased. Um, I read some from the library, I read my, I read my ARCs, those advanced readers I talked about is usually what I use my Kindle for. But like I get these emails with like these incredible book bargains. And right. so like for 99 cents, I mean, it's a book I wanted to read anyway, but I have yet it's to read time. one of those. <laughs> and now, and the thing is, is I don't even see them. If it's a book that's from the library or a book that I purchased in print, at least like it's sitting there reminding me, these are just in the ether, they're gone. I don't, I mean. <laughs> yeah. And Cheryl loves that it automatically sends it back when it's yes. inspired. She doesn't have to worry about it. There's no. Oh, I got to get to this to the library. We don't do fees. We don't have fines anymore, so there's there's not that panic rush that you got to get it back to the library real real fast. Mm -hmm. But people always want to, you know, they want to get it back so the next person can read it. But you don't yeah. have, you don't even have to worry about that with the ebooks. They just return automatically. Yeah, I do want to share a little bit of ebook news. Okay. Now that we're talking about ebooks. Yeah, if you use the um, OverDrive app on your device. Um, Overdrive is going to sunset that app. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to um, encourage people to go to the Libby app because mm -hmm. a lot of people, they've had the Overdrive app for a really long time. So they didn't, they just never got around to installing the Libby app, which is their newer. Their, and it's the uh, same app. content. There's yeah, no, the same content. Content. it's literally um, a different app. Yeah. So, um, and they, they're, trying to encourage more people to go to the Libby app now. So yeah. And next year you'll after February, you'll no longer be able to even get the overdrive app. You'll have, Libby will be the only choice. Okay. So. Well, that is good to know. And I'm sure there are plenty of people still using just the overdrive one, but mm -hmm. it, it, it is kind of confusing because you think you're going to like lose all of overdrive, but you're not, it's just no. a different app, but they didn't like redesign their current app. They made a new app and that, called it something different. And I feel like that that is a little bit confusing to your yes. casual reader. Yeah. Um, it was a, well, I kind of understand why they didn't, uh, why they didn't just change the original app. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they had to completely overhaul it. It works. The functionality is just like completely different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's easier on the Libby app. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Cheryl, you'll you'll want to get the Libby app eventually. It's not like the the Overdrive app is going to stop working. It's not going to stop working for probably until the end of 2022. Um, but you'll eventually want to get the the Libby app. And if you have any questions about that, I'm working at the library tomorrow. Um, you can call and ask to talk to Leah, and I will tell you all about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, and you're right, Lib. I never used the regular, the Overdrive app, but the Libby app is very easy to mm -hmm. use. But I can see how probably a different iteration, a different app, is probably less simplistic. It is very like very easy to navigate. So hopefully, it won't be too bad of a change. <laughs> it, it won't be. It, yeah, it works. <laughs> Just a, um, like different. I have something else that I was thinking of. Oh, hey, Marilyn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbor was frustrated by the overdrive app and she told him to get the Libby app instead. Good job, Marilyn. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I did have one more thing I wanted to mention about a book that I did not bring home. Um, okay. But because it was checked out, they were all checked out. Um, obviously, I couldn't have checked it out anyway because I hit my limit. But right. uh, this, we, got, <laughs> we got a book called the TikTok Cookbook. And I wanted to bring this up because... I'm not on TikTok. I've already said that on here. And everything I'm going to say right now is going to just immediately, like, I'm just going to expose myself for being however uncool or old or whatever I am. But just we got this TikTok cookbook and it's by some TikTok food person, but it just, it collects different 
food trends and recipe trends from the past, you know, however long TikTok's been doing that. And so like cookbooks are fun to look at. And when I got it though, I was flipping through the pages and that's why I wanted to bring it here. Cause I kept looking at things. I'm like, well, that doesn't look very good. Well, that doesn't look very good. And, and so I don't think that as a recipe maker or like as a, as a cook or whatever, I'm not sure that trendy TikTok trends are the food that I'm interested in making, but yeah. just there was one thing. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm opening myself up to ridicule here because there's probably like a whole thing I can watch, but they had something called pancake cereal where you just make little tiny pancakes. Like with just like the recipe is like a box of pancake mix and you make yeah. little tiny pancakes and then you put them in a bowl and in the book they had milk with it. And that just seems no matter how crispy you make those pancakes, isn't that just going to be mush? And so then I looked online to like make sure I didn't make too big of a fool of myself. And some people just put it like a thing of butter on it and then some syrup, but then it's just a bowl of tiny pieces of pancakes. It's not it seems like a whole lot of unnecessary exactly. work. Exactly. And so that brings me to the second recipe I wanted to acknowledge, which was basically a they call it like a honeycomb pasta bake. But yeah. it's just like a pasta bake. So you've got pasta, you put you put sauce on you put cheese and stuff, but you it's like rigatoni noodles and you have them like in a um like in a round pan, like a springform pan, and you have to you cook the noodles and then you have to stand all the noodles upright. So that like, when you look down at it, it's kind of like a honeycomb, like the ends of the noodles are up, but you're standing up cooked rigatoni noodles in a, like a spring form. And like, yeah. And then you pour the sauce it's, over. It's, and it's, it's slippery when they're. Yeah. And like, I'm sure it tastes good, but I don't think it tastes any different than just like putting pasta in like a casserole dish in the oven. So anyway, I kind of wanted to bring that up also, like, could someone if someone wants to explain, um, but it's a TikTok cookbook if you're interested in checking it out. I wish I could just flash a meme on the screen right now because like yes. nobody got time for that. That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And why yeah. would you <laughs> Carrie Leah is so unimpressed? Yeah, I'm I'm really unimpressed. Yeah, and so I felt like I, like I just like this opened a whole world. I didn't know any of these recipes existed because, like I said, I'm not on TikTok. They had a lot. I was vaguely aware of that whipped coffee thing. So they have a lot of whipped coffee and like whipped milk recipes. But just if you are, I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out there. The TikTok cookbook, and maybe it would be exciting for people wanting to like get a visual, you know, like a visually appealing thing. But I just when I saw that rigatoni thing, I was like, oh no. And like okay, that. so you serve that. And, and then it'll fall apart. It doesn't stick right. together. Like, there's no point. I, I don't see any point to that. Mm -hmm. No. So anyway, no. thanks for letting me get that out. I haven't had anyone to tell about that. And I wanted to bring that book in. Yeah. But anyway, pancake cereal and honeycomb pasta bake. No. Anyway. All right. You talk about something now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, I brought, I, I realized today when I was looking at all the books that I had at home, I, I, I never grew out of the picture pic, picture book phase. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I select most of my books because they have pretty pictures in them. Like, <laughs> like that is what I've got laying around. Like, I don't, I, I, I always check out gardening books. Like, I haven't actually done much gardening, and like mm -hmm. this year was a total waste. But um, like, I'm always like, oh, yeah. and this one is 100 uh, plants to feed the monarchs because. Yeah. Like, you know, I've got a couple of, I've got like my back fence is like covered in this something that someone told me is milkweed vine. Like, I, okay. I don't even know, but I do like it, it attracts the butterflies and, you know, in, in the winter, it looks awful because yeah. when it wow. dies, but when it comes back, it's pretty yeah. and like in a couple of weeks it will bloom because okay. uh, it blooms very late in the summer. And, yeah. um, but so I, picked up this other book because I always want stuff that will like attract the butterflies. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. I love that. And yeah. I was flipping through this book and I discovered that there are like 31 different milkweeds listed in this book. Oh, I mean, okay. There are so many different varieties of milkweed. I did not either. But um, they have beautiful pictures of the plants. No, nope, the other way. Here you go. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Beautiful You're pictures right. of the plants. Yeah. Like, where they grow. Yeah. So, you know, the map will tell you if it'll grow in your region yeah. and um, information on, on the species and when it blooms and all of that. Yeah. So it's just, I, I think I'm going to have to 
and I really want to go back to like that native plants, like the plants that are from that area, from this yeah. area, rather than some of those yeah. other plants. So I yeah. just, I, I'm, someday I'm going to have a garden and it's going to be a butterfly garden for the butterflies. Mm -hmm. And when, I don't know, but until then I will keep checking out the pretty books. Okay. <laughs> looking yes. at the <laughs> Well, I, I t I'll tell you, I get a ton of butterflies on my zinnias, and zinnias yeah. are just very colorful. They're very easy to grow. They f fill up space, and they're really fun, and I do get a ton of butterflies on them. Like, when I mow around that area, I'm, like, dodging, you know, butterflies flying mm -hmm. around me, and they really like them, too. So, like, there was one. It was just, it was such a big butterfly, and I just could stand there, like, right next to it, just watching it you know, do its butterfly yeah. thing there. And um, because just there were so many flowers for it to choose from, it didn't seem bothered by me. And um, yeah, so hopefully you can make yourself a butterfly garden. Last year when I had the zinnias, I had so many butterflies mm -hmm. and I loved it. So those yeah, were definitely I've, I've seen, in my yard. <laughs> I've seen hummingbirds at my zinnias before as well. Oh, really? Exciting. And those don't linger. They're not like the butterflies, but like mm -hmm. I'll come around the corner and I'll see one like right there and then it'll zoom off. And mm -hmm. it's, very, I mean, you don't get to really watch them the way you do at a hummingbird feeder, but it does still feel really satisfying. Like, yes, <laughs> you know, I planted something at once and yeah, doing my part. Right. Well, my, I'll talk about this book real quick. Um, it's called We Are the Babysitter's Club Essays and Artwork from Grown Up Readers. That's pretty self explanatory, oh. but it's basically just a collection of essays and a little bit of art. Um, on different aspects of the Babysitter's Club by uh, people who read it growing up. Um, and so it kind of divides it into a few different sections. But um, I I mean, I just, I think that probably most most of us who've read the Babysitter's Club could find something in here, um, could like pick and choose the essays they wanted to read. Um, yeah. There is a section on called Fashion Statements, Personal Style in the Babysitter's Club. And that's definitely the section that I, that I want to read. And some of them are more serious than others. There's even like a comic portion. Oh, cool. um, but I saw the authors talk about this, not in person, just an online thing. I saw them talk about it a little bit. The, not the authors, the editors. Um, but just about how rewarding it was to make. And, um, and I'm bringing this up because it came in, but also because on my Facebook, I was reminded today that it was one year ago that we did that show about. Really? Well, and I mean, I don't know if that's actually accurate, but Facebook told me like it presented that post as one year ago. So I don't know if it really was, or if that's just the closest thing Facebook had to like tell me about. Right. Um, but that one where we talked about Sweet Valley High and Baby Club and so. Yes, yeah, so I was read at that age, and oh, mm -hmm. that that was like one of the most fun episodes we did talking about cool. those books. Just yeah, because yeah. like everyone had something to share. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. everyone. I know. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, um, so that was fun. And if you're still into it, we are the Babysitters Club. Is <laughs> okay, um, I'll do another one. Yeah, this one isn't a picture book. Um, the Ride of Her Life, mm -hmm. the, true, the True Story of a Woman, Her Horse, and Their Last Chance Journey Across America by mm -hmm. Elizabeth Letts. And there's a picture of the woman and her horse. Mm -hmm. um, there was this, it was 1954. Um, there was a 63-year-old woman from Maine. She was a farmer, um, Annie Wilkins. She, her doctor told her she had two years to live. And she's like, you know, I want to see the Pacific Ocean before I die. So she buys a horse, like a, 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 it's an older horse, it's, and she, her horse and her dog take off on a cross country journey. Oh my gosh! To the Pacific Ocean, um, oh. and she didn't even she didn't even take a map with her. Uh -huh. Like she's just like I'll get there uh, somehow. Like she depends on the kindness of strangers wow. and. Like, yeah, it's like, like I said, 1954. So like the highways are becoming a thing and, you know, she just, but she does, she, she journeys across America. She traveled 4,000 miles and wow. um, yeah. So it's just a really interesting story of her journey. Yeah. And I just was like, oh, I need to read that one. It just, yeah. like, it, it reminded me very wow. much of that story of the, um, the gentleman who wanted to see his brother and he got on his tractor and he uh 
rode for my, I don't yeah. even know how long to see his brother, but yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah, God. It was going to be a really interesting story. Wow. Can you imagine riding cross country on a horse? Because also, I mean, I know plenty of people have done it. I know, but yeah. just in our, my modern sensibility, that is quite a lot to expect of oneself. And again, at a time, it's not like it was in the 1800s either. Right. Like it's not horse travel was not our primary mode of transportation in the 1950s. And she chose right. that anyway. And uh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine like my, my, my posterior enjoying 4,000 miles sports back. <laughs> um, I'm like, I've done a lot of padding, so it'd probably be okay. But that, that was still, that's a, that, that's a lot of, I would, be in the saddle to... I would be so stiff, my hips. Right. I'm trying to imagine that first day, like yeah. climbing, and then I'd be like, I can't do another day. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. And um, like, she had really interesting encounters along the way with famous people and really had, famous like, people? job offers and a marriage proposal and like all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. happened. So, yeah, marriage proposal. So, interesting story. <laughs> Well, I don't have anything as interesting as that because as I said, I think these are books that I checked out. <laughs> I'm not sure why I took them, but this one is called The Unseen by Roy Jacobson. And I checked this book out because of the cover, like the ones mm -hmm. you're describing. Um, I know that for a fact because it's hard to tell on here probably, but it's like this line illustration and I like it and um, of the sea and like these people in this boat. And it's about a woman who like was born and raised on this island. Um, mm -hmm. Where, that's like named after her family. And I think her family are like the only people who live on it. And so it's about them possibly uh, moving inland and just probably encountering the unseen. Um, and there's a, it's a trilogy and it was translated from the Norwegian and it was uh, shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. And sometimes I like reading, like if I haven't in a while, I like reading a translated book just because I feel like even though I'm not reading it in another language, it is a different, it was written in a different feel. Yeah, there's going to be a different sensibility. And so this is Norwegian. And so I think I checked it out because of the cover, but also because like it was going to have a different feel to it. But a lot that's going back because I didn't. <laughs> Mary being the good librarian, she is. I couldn't think of the the the, the tractor story, but they did make yeah. it into a movie, that, that person. Um, and she's got a link there to the, to the movie that was made about that story. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you, Mary. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you have encountered him. How do I, Dad? How do I? That book. <laughs> um, uh, this is Rob Kenny. He's got the popular YouTube series, Dad, How Do I? That's like the name of his channel. And he posts videos teaching people how to do stuff. Like, yeah. you know, his father like abandoned the family when he was a teenager and he and he and his I think seven siblings mm -hmm. um you know they had each other to lean on and, and yeah. but there were things that you know you learn from a dad and yeah. a lot of people out there they don't they don't have a dad mm -hmm. um so he he just teaches you his channel he teaches you all kinds yeah. of things how to yeah. like start investing or how to stop a toilet that's running. I mean, he it's, yeah. it runs the gamut, how to tie a tie, you know, yeah. because, you know, these are like skills mm -hmm. that you, you lean right. on your father for sometimes. So right. um, he, he nice. provides, provides that assistance and he's just a really nice guy. It seems mm -hmm. like from his YouTube channels, I've watched some of his videos Yeah, and it just, yeah, so he's become pretty popular, and uh, this is just his book of advice for a living. Okay, so it's just kind of a general book of advice. Yeah, it's it, you know, he's got like funny dad jokes that start every chapter, which you gotta love a dad joke. Yes, um, but you know how to buy a vehicle, um, how to interview for a job, um, how to get a loan and do your taxes, okay. how to fry an egg. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's so it's very basic. Yeah, uh, building a toolkit, like what tools you should have at the ready, nice. and you know, but yeah, it's just it's life advice. So That's I just great. thought it's just he seems like a yeah. really sweet guy. So yeah. and I enjoy his YouTube channel. I'll subscribe. Very good idea. <laughs> um, I'll talk about this one. This is, 
This is called The 22 Murders of Madison May mm -hmm. by Max Berry. Again, no memory of wh wh why I checked, because this isn't our book, so it's something that I had to actively put on hold. It wasn't something I discovered in our, yeah. like, on our shelf, so I, anyway. Um, I'm just gonna read this to you briefly because it's the best way to describe it. In Queens, New York, a 22-year-old real estate agent, Madison May, is showing a house. The buyer, a man she's never met, is friendly, engaging, and claims to be her soulmate from a parallel life. She's in danger, he tells her, and he's come to save her. Later that day, a newspaper journalist is assigned to report on Madison May's murder, and she found, finds herself drawn into a conspiracy involving a powerful group who've harnessed the ability to slip between lives and to move from one version of reality to another. And apparently, Madison May is murdered over and over again in different ways wherever she goes. And so the and journalist has to like save Madison May to fix the problem or something. Anyway, okay. it's really interesting. never read one quite like that. Still won't because it's got to go back. But <laughs> I thought it was really interesting and exciting. And, um, you know, it is a new book this summer. So I wonder why we didn't get it. We should. Well, we may have, but I guess <laughs> as of that point, well, or we may have even as of this point, but this was like, I placed a hold, like, because this isn't our copy, I know I had to have requested this. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I picked it up and was like, oh, I want to read this. I was like on the computer and like, yeah. you know what I mean? We yes. very well put You're on like, it. I heard about this book. I'm going to put it on hold right now. Yeah. I do that. And then you could get anybody's copy. Usually you get ours, but if ours was checked out, I might've gotten someone else's. Yeah. So yeah, I have no idea. We, put, we very well could have it. That sounds, it actually sounds familiar. So I think we probably do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. I don't know. Okay. I've got like two books like this. So I'll go, I'm going to go, I'm going to do two. Yeah. I love like stories of everyday people and mm -hmm. like books of stories of everyday people. Yeah. This is yeah. um, American Portrait, The Story of Us Told by Us. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, thousands of stories, one life changing year. So it's like, you know, different people's stories of 2020 living okay, through 2020. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just everyday people and they're, you know, mm -hmm. photographs of like, yeah. real people. Um, it was a PBS uh, like platform documentary project mm -hmm. um, with you know, people from all walks of life submitting their stories and coming together to to tell her story and um so yeah it just it's really nice. interesting yeah. I, and i love these books where it's just little snippets from everyday people so yeah, um, yeah. and pictures to go along with them i don't yeah. know what it is about this kind of like not even a group project because like, you're not working together right. as a group. it's just individuals submitting yeah. their stories and yeah. making it one the second book I have is also like that. It's um, Tiny Love Stories, True Tales of Love in 100 Words or Less. Aww. And <laughs> that's what it is. It's, you know, yeah. just these tiny little love stories. Yeah. And some of them are like, you know, stories of people. Some of them are stories of places. Some of them are stories of, you know, like a special time that people remember. Um, yeah. You know, one is a woman who is an immigrant and you know longing longing for her home country and missing it and you know it's just it's beautiful and yeah they're very short very quick reads and like i said i just love those everyday people yeah. stories and the books that yeah. come from gathering those so yeah yeah those are nice and that's that one those are the same kind of idea but uh <laughs> Carrie, no, I mean, no, there were no, stories no. of cats Possibly, possibly stories of cats. I, I haven't read them all. <laughs> one can assume. Um, this one, I feel like is vaguely pandemic related, so I'll do this. I know we're over okay. time as well, but this is by a YA author called A.S. King, and it is called Switch. And A.S. King has written a lot of books, including yeah. um, Dig, which won the 2020 Michael L. Prince Award, and I did read that. I listened to it actually, and um, I don't know. It was it was interesting. But her books are always kind of weird, and I don't know how else to say it except that they're just like a little strange. There's always going to be some element to it that you're like, "Is this real?" 
that something's happening that couldn't possibly happen. I don't know. It just there's always like a sort of surreal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call it magical because they are not magical books, but just right. like a surreal element. You know, someone's visiting someone from beyond the grave or something. You know, it just and it's just it's just happening in there. Um, or there's time travel or something. And this one, I just, I'm assuming this is probably inspired by the pandemic because it says time has stopped. It's been June 23rd, 2020 for nearly a year, as far as anyone can tell. And so they've have to like try, we have to on earth try to, it's like time still passes, but like time doesn't exist or something. And I'm guessing this might have to do with something like it was written like during those early days of the pandemic or something like that. Um, I started reading this one, but I just, I couldn't quite get into the concept at the time that I was starting to read it. So I'm going to send it back, but um, I do recommend, it's just, I'm not a YA reader, but I, A.S. King, like, it feels like it's not usually caught up in some of the stuff that I don't like about YA, which is like teenage love and relationships. <laughs> um, and, and I just, I would recommend her if you are looking for something that skews a little sci-fi-ish, but without being hard sci-fi. I don't know, she's just, she's interesting. A touch of something fantastical without it being unrealistic, like somehow possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I read, and I read another one by her as well about like a lady pirate. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember, the, the dust of a hundred or a thousand dogs, it, this lady pirate is cursed and has to come back as, as a dog like a hundred or a thousand times, whatever the number is. And then she finally comes back as a human again and can like get revenge on the person who cursed her. But now it's all these years later. Um, so that's like a reincarnation situation. And that's just accepted as part of the plot. It doesn't get too deep into what that is and how that works. But I don't know. Yeah, just some interesting stuff. So if you've never read her and that sounds appealing to you, I do recommend any of those. I do enjoy stories of reincarnation, especially when like someone like remembers their past lives and it mm -hmm. affects their their yeah. journey. I, I I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um I cannot resist decorating books. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the topic is. Mm -hmm. I check out every decorating book that we purchase. And even though like I open this up and the first thing I see, like that couch yeah. is hideous. <laughs> um absolutely hideous but uh mary's got the title for you thank Dust you 100, 100 dogs, dogs is it only has to be it only has to be a dog 100 times not a thousand yeah. so but yes i love decorating books and flipping through i never read like you yeah. know they, they talk about like the elements of style and how to mm -hmm. like plan your room um and carrie thinks the couch is beautiful we have very different tastes um <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I just love looking at the, the bright colored pictures and the pretty pictures and imagining yeah. what I would do with a house if I if I had a house and money to decorate it and you know that kind of stuff. Not that I'm homeless. I'm, I don't I don't live on the streets. But yeah. <laughs> and Mary also agrees that that couch is fantastic and she needs it as a sweater and as a couch so she can match her furniture. <laughs> I think you've got to hide from people, just wear clothing that's exactly the upholstery fabric of your couch. And, yes. never and I think it's just very, very funny. And as soon as I said that that couch was hideous, I knew that Carrie would love it. Um, yes, Carrie loves I that mean, couch. I think I like it too. It's just very like 70s. It is. It is indeed very yeah. 70s. Those browns are very much the color scheme that Carrie likes. Um, not for me. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> So, <laughs> but, but I suspected Mary would like it also because they tend yeah. to share a sense of yeah. style that I do not. Yes. And Mary says, I figured out her evil plan, which is to just blend in yeah, with yeah. The, uh, the furniture and hopes that no one bothers you, which is not a bad plan. I mean, right. something that sounds great. <laughs> so. Well, I know we've hit, we've definitely surpassed our time. So, oh, yeah. is there anything else that, um, just really, really must be discussed today. Um, I just have more pretty books. I will say, if you're into like knitting and crocheting, we've got some some new some new stuff on the shelves. So 
We have a new Harry Potter crocheting book that probably is at main library right now. I think we sent it out like yesterday. We also have a new Star Wars knitting book. Yeah. So if you're into yeah. geeky, nerdy stuff and fiber uh, arts, fiber check arts. Out. <laughs> yeah, the, the Harry Potter one is so cool. There was so much great stuff in there. You're crocheting figurines, you're crocheting scarves yeah. and sweaters and everything. It was really neat. When when my coworker opened the box that had that in it, she's like, Allison, do you know anyone who crochets? And I was like, not really. And she's like, that's too bad. And I was like, what do you have? And yeah, the stuff in there is pretty neat. So I know. Crocheting is one of those things that I need to learn. Like I look at this and I'm like, that's not too complicated. I could do that. But I, I haven't quite figured out crocheting yet. I, I get, I get, Confused? I don't know. Knitting yeah. just seems so much straightforward to me. Mm. I don't. Not, know. I, I do none of those things. I have very fumbly fingers. Uh, I, I'm still still recovering from the trauma of trying to make friendship bracelets. So I think we're just gonna have to fiber <laughs> arts or not. I love friendship bracelets. I, yeah, I just, those just, are like. I don't know. I just, I think I have poor fine motor skills, but it's just, it's so frustrating to mm. try to like, there's some, the threads are so tiny. Yeah. And I'm like, anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> topic for another day. I'm sure you guys right. will really hope you can tune in that day. Um, <laughs> but thanks for being here with us today. Yes. Thank you. We'll see you next week. See ya. <laughs>